Welcome to Module 1 in this Baseball 5 webinar. In this first module, for both game officials and coaches, we will talk about the Baseball 5 project, the different ways to set up a field, and we'll give a brief introduction of the differences between baseball, softball, and Baseball 5. We will use presentations and videos to guide us through all modules. The first topic, though, is the Baseball 5 project itself the vision, and the mission of the WBSC. We start with a video that briefly explains what Baseball 5 is. Welcome. Over the next few minutes, we'll show you everything you need to know to play the world's most inclusive new game, Baseball 5. Baseball 5 is a street version of the classic games of baseball and softball. It is a fast, young, and dynamic discipline that follows the same founding concepts of baseball and softball, but it can be played everywhere and requires no specialized equipment, simply a rubber ball. Ready to learn more? Let's start by having a look at a Baseball 5 field. Keep in mind the dimensions we discuss are ideal for competition, but they can be altered based on the needs of your specific space. The infield has a square shape with a base in every corner. The distance in between bases is 13 meters. The ideal shape and size of the bases is a square of 50 centimeters per side. If possible, home base can be shaped like home plate in baseball and softball. Starting from the batter's box behind home plate, the bases are numbered anti-clockwise, first, second, and third. The outfield fence runs parallel to the infield lines between first and third base. It sits approximately 5 meters beyond the infield. Its height should be roughly 60 to 80 centimeters. The fair territory of the field should have a square shape of 18 meters per side, in which one of the corners coincides with home plate. The batter's box sits outside of fair territory and has a square shape of 3 meters per side. There you have it an official Baseball 5 field. Remember, this is a game that is meant to be adapted to the needs of your specific space. Now that you've created the field, it's time to fill it. All you need is a ball and two teams of at least five players each. Note that during official competitions, the maximum number of players on each team's roster is eight. Five in play, plus three reserves. Once you've formed teams, the game is played very much in the spirit of traditional baseball and softball, with the action split into five innings. An inning consists of a turn at bat for each team. Before play begins, the teams must submit their batting order, the order in which their five active players will take their turns at bat. This order shall be followed throughout the game unless a reserve player is substituted for a starter. The home team starts the game on defense, and the guest team starts on offense, or at bat. The goal of the defensive team is to eliminate or get out three players on the offensive team. Once three outs have been made, the teams can switch sides so that the defensive team becomes the offensive team and vice versa. In a moment, we will look at different ways to record outs. But first, let's look at the typical defensive formation. The five players of the defensive team shall all be in fair territory when the batter is ready to hit the ball. Here you see a typical defensive formation, with a defender playing first base, second base, shortstop, third base, and a midfield position. Keep in mind that the defensive players may change their position before every action according to their team tactics and the demands of the situation. The goal of the offense is to score as many runs as possible. How? By completing the full circle of the bases counterclockwise, and touching home plate. Once the defense is set, the action begins with one player from the offensive team in the batter's box holding the ball. The ball has to be hit hard or slapped either with a palm or a fist and must touch the ground in fair territory at least once. Note that the batter has to hit the ball with his bare hands, so the use of gloves or any other equipment is forbidden. The batter must also remain entirely within the lines of the batter's box until the hit ball gets into fair territory. At that point, the batter begins running to first base. With the ball in play,
the defense has three ways to record outs. The first is by touching the base that a runner is forced to run to while in possession of the ball. The second is by catching a hit ball before it touches the ground. The third way is by tagging or touching a runner with the ball when they are not on a base. Let's look more closely at first base, where most defensive plays are made. In order to avoid collisions, first base is double wide, so that while the defensive play is made on the base in fair territory, the batter, and then the runner's goal, is to touch the base in foul territory. Once the base runner has touched the base, in order to stay safe, they must remain in the one and a half meter safe area around the base. In addition to being eliminated by the defense, offensive players can also get out a number of other ways. The most common of these are illegal hits. To avoid an illegal hit, the first bounce of the ball must be at least three meters from home plate, or two meters, for the under 14 category. In official competitions, umpires will have the final judgment on whether the hit was legal or not. Illegal hits will always result in an out. Other ways a batter can be ruled out include stepping on or outside of the batter's box lines while hitting the ball, hitting the ball in foul territory, hitting the ball into or over the fence without it first touching the ground, and not respecting the batting order and hitting out of turn. Another set of rules apply to base runners. Most importantly, runners must remain on their base until the batter has put the ball in play. The runner can be called out by starting towards the next base before the batter hits the ball. Runners can also be called out for passing a teammate while running the bases. Runners may also be called out if they are tagged while two or more runners are on the same base. Also note that runners must do everything possible to avoid colliding with the defenders. Should an umpire decide that a runner could have avoided a collision, the runner shall be ruled out. With these rules being adhered to, the gameplay should flow, and the innings should move rapidly from one to the next. The game ends at the end of the fifth inning if one team has scored more runs than the other. In the case of a tie game after five innings, the team shall play and complete extra innings until one team scores more runs than the opponent. Should the home team be ahead after the guest team has completed its fifth offensive inning, the game is over and the home team wins. That's all there is to it. Baseball 5 can be easily adapted to your specific situation. So make it your own. Take it home and play it. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I certainly enjoyed being a part of making it a few years ago. But as you can tell, Baseball 5 is a very young discipline and it has evolved quite a bit since that video. Some rules have changed, and we'll see those changes step by step in the next module. But now let's go through the presentation that explains why Baseball 5 is so important. You see that first word there, fun. And you may have noticed in the video that Baseball 5 is, above all, a fun game. And this has been proven. In every country where the WBSC has introduced the game, people have loved it. Last October, the WBSC Coach Commission ran a baseball and softball clinic to certify new instructors. This is just an example of how fun it is. The clinic ended with a Baseball 5 tournament with the participants, and these participants were instructors from all over the world, very high-profile people in the international baseball and softball worlds. They were having so much fun playing Baseball 5 that they didn't want to stop, and now most of those instructors are pushing to introduce the game in their home countries. You see next that it's a fast game. And that I can tell you I've seen firsthand. If both teams play good defense, an entire game can be completed in as little as 15 or 20 minutes. And it's an intuitive game. It's easily understood. And I can give you an example of this from the experience at the Youth Olympic Games in Buenos Aires in 2018 where Baseball 5 was part of the Sport Initiation Zone. For almost two weeks, every 30 minutes, the WBSC presented the game to a new group of school students. The rules were explained to the students in just five minutes, and keep in mind that these were students with no knowledge of baseball or softball, yet they were able to play Baseball 5 
and have fun playing it right after the initial demonstration. There's no doubt that it has been a success. Why Baseball 5? Baseball 5 comes from the desire of the WBSC to increase accessibility to sport. In some countries, spaces are limited and access to traditional baseball and softball equipment is impossible for a variety of different reasons. Baseball 5 is also an additional tool for national federations to increase numbers and participation. Examples of the why are truly endless, but you'll figure out the answer step by step during these webinars. Baseball 5 has proven itself to be a solution. One of the most exciting aspects of Baseball 5 is that it's a discipline that can be played year-round in every country because it can be played indoors as well as outdoors. It can be used at the grassroots level to introduce the game to young people through schools and camps, and it can ultimately recruit new members for baseball and softball national federations. Now you see that next point about promotional events and a world tour. And that's an area where there's room for development. You can create events and activate sponsors and bring your community into the mix as well. You can also work together with government organizations and NGOs, non-governmental organizations, in socially responsible programs. One national federation even plans to introduce the game in its prisons. You know, we'll focus a lot about young people in schools, but just think about that how adaptable this game is, that it can be introduced in prisons, too. WBSC has actually also brought Baseball 5 to Syrian refugees in Jordan. It's really amazing how much has been done in such a short amount of time. Something else that Baseball 5 has been able to do is help some countries where baseball and softball have two different federations to work together in the project to create a national team, and that's the integration we're talking about. When it comes to international competitions and multi-sport events, there's a lot of opportunities there, and we'll look at those last two points more closely a little bit later on. You see that word, explosion up top, the global explosion of Baseball 5, and that's not an overstatement. In a little over two years, we have direct evidence of Baseball 5 being played in 70 countries, more than 70 countries, on all continents. And you can see this map, which shows the explosion of the game that's already taken place around the world. Every place that is shaded yellow has had Baseball 5 played there. And you can imagine what, what will happen in the near future and all the opportunities for involvement that the game has created and will continue to create going forward. Again, we ask, why Baseball 5? Well, before we get to that word complex in regards to baseball and softball, I just want to mention that Baseball 5 is kind of like a little brother or a little sister to baseball and softball. And lately, you may have noticed that all the major sports have a little brother or an urban version. You can think about volleyball and beach volleyball. Think about football or soccer with five-on-five -five versions that have sprung up. Basketball, a game that's normally played five-on-five, five, now has a three-on-three -three version, which is really popular. There's rugby seven and a whole lot of examples of how traditional sports are adapting and creating more new opportunities for people to get involved. And the WBSE, as the world governing body of baseball and softball, had to think about how to grow and develop the game and not just the business and in the last few years, baseball and softball have lost members worldwide due to the explosion of other sports. Even in countries like the United States and Japan, where baseball and softball are a national tradition, those sports are finding themselves struggling to compete, especially at the youth level, and especially in countries where baseball and softball don't already have a strong foothold. The games of baseball and softball are often perceived as being too complex, and that has been a big reason why they failed to grow, maybe as quickly as we would like. Here's a good example that explains why baseball and softball 
might be having some trouble. And I'm just making this example up, and I'll use a kid in America as an example. It doesn't matter, boy or girl, but just imagine that this kid is playing baseball, and they play right field on defense. And it can often happen in a game that no balls are hit to right field during a game. So for an entire game, when on defense, this kid does not make a catch, he doesn't make a throw, he just stands in right field. When he's on offense, he bats three times. But maybe he doesn't even get a pitch to hit. He might not see a single strike. So in his three turns at bat, he takes three walks. So he gets back home. His mom asks him if he had fun at the game. And what do you think he's going to say? Probably, no, I didn't have a whole lot of fun. I stood in right field. I didn't see a ball. When I was at bat, I didn't have a pitch to hit. So I walked. And what do you think his mom will say next? She'll probably encourage him to go try another sport with more action. In this situation, the one I just described, happens a lot, especially in countries that have a less developed baseball and softball infrastructure. And to really define what we mean by it's too complex, well, look at all these barriers to entry. There's the prohibitive cost of the equipment. There's the need for a dedicated venue and the massive dimensions of a baseball or softball field. And there's always some difficulty understanding the long list of rules. But the good news is none of that applies to Baseball 5. Those technical complexities you see at the bottom, the unique game mechanism and the unique wide range of skills, that's part of what Baseball 5 highlights so well. Baseball 5 maintains the uniqueness of baseball and softball while it eliminates the complexities. And that's how we can recruit new members through Baseball 5. It's a game that follows the concepts of baseball and softball. It's a game with a spirit that is actually almost identical to baseball and softball, but there's more immediate access. And now we'll look at the basics of the game. I'm sure you've already gotten the main idea that Baseball 5 is played with five players on each team over the course of five innings. But like baseball and softball, there are still three outs to be made before offense and defense switch. There's no pitching, which eliminates the problem of walks. There's no stadium required. And every time that a player goes into the batter's box, they hit the ball and there's a play to be made. The batter will either be safe or out. There's no downtime, which is a big part of what makes it so exciting. Another unique aspect of Baseball 5 is that it's a mixed gender game with at least two male and two female players on the field at all times. There's also a flexible game format. Games can be played one at a time or as a best of three series or really in any way that suits your specific situation. And of course, as you've heard me say before, and will probably hear me say again, all you need is a ball. That's a very exciting part of Baseball 5. And the beauty of it is that it's built on the baseball and softball principles and has the same dynamics as baseball and softball. Now we'll take a look at the field. You might be able to see the measurements, and keep in mind that they're for an official competition field, but the measurements are simple. It's a three by three meter batter's box. Bases have 50 centimeters per side and 13 meters distance between one another. There's another five meters beyond the bases to get to the fence. There's foul territory. That's about another three meters. And there's a safe area that extends one and a half meters past each base. And that allows for a player to run through a base without fear of being tagged out. As we've shown already, Baseball 5 has been introduced in many countries. Sometimes it was planned in advance and the organizers had everything required to train and play games, but sometimes the field of play was improvised with the help of the local national federation or other local organizers. 
So we're going to take a look in the next slide at examples of fields that were set up all over the world in different ways. I really like this slide because I think it shows how diverse Baseball 5 is. And it gives you a better understanding of how Baseball 5 truly can be played everywhere. And where we'll start is in the top left corner. And that's a picture from Buenos Aires, Argentina during the 2018 Youth Olympic Games. The WBSC had a nice space in the Olympic Village to debut Baseball 5. The, search, the surface used was natural grass and the lines were marked with spray paint. A Baseball 5 logo was created with spray paint as well in two colors. That field was used for 15 days, and it only had to be repainted every four or five days. It was really easy to maintain. Next to that, in the top center, that's an example from Ivory Coast last December, where Baseball 5 was introduced as a tool for the development of baseball and softball at the grassroots level. The games were played on a basketball court. The surface was cement. And because it was a basketball court, we couldn't use paint to make the lines. So we used some of the already existing sidelines as foul lines, and we used cones. You see the blue cones there to mark the batter's box. More cones were used to mark the four and a half meter no hit zone the safe area at first base, and the end of the fair territory is there was no fence. So that's a really different field than the one you saw in the example on the previous slide, but it still worked. Moving over to the top right-hand corner, you can see another basketball court, and this one was actually in China. We were there for a Baseball 5 clinic, and the National Federation prepared a nice venue with fences in that gymnasium. They used duct tape on the parquet floor as it was easy to remove. The tape was yellow for the lines and red for the bases and batter's box. Very simple. In the bottom left, it was in Uganda during a seminar for baseball and softball coaches, umpires, and scorers. That seminar was also used to introduce Baseball 5. We weren't allowed to paint on the ground because it was inside of a local school and chalk wasn't available. So this is where somebody got really creative and those white lines that you see marked in the bottom left-hand corner, they were marked with cooking flour, which is just remarkable. Somebody on the team that helped design the field had some pretty artistic skills. They were even able to make that Baseball 5 logo that you see in the batter's box with flour, too. And I just love that example. In the bottom center... That was in Washington, D.C., in the United States during the 2018 MLB All-Star Game. It's really official. There's a turf field, and this was at the Fan Fest. The organizers bought a piece of carpet and marked the Baseball 5 logo with spray paint, and then they added the lines with duct tape, and boom, ready to go. In the bottom right, another more conventional example, I'd say similar to the first one we talked about, but in the bottom right, that's at a Little League field in Italy, and all the lines are marked with chalk on the clay. So there you see six photos of very different Baseball 5 fields, but they all came out the same way, and they led to the same kind of gameplay. Not pictured here, but just something that we should tell you about. Another example was that in one African country, the game was introduced on a rainy day, and it was introduced kind of as a last-minute idea because the kids couldn't go outside and play baseball. Instead, they played a Baseball 5 game in a small classroom with bases that were probably no more than 7 or 8 meters apart. So that's about half the size that we talked about sooner. What they did with the smaller base paths is the kids walked instead of ran between bases, and it worked. That's the thing about Baseball 5. It always works. Now, as we mentioned, for WBSC official events, there will be a dedicated venue. It'll be branded and professional, but to start and develop your program and train your players is totally different. As you can see, there's really no excuses not to get started. You can be creative. This discipline can literally be played everywhere. Now we'll talk very briefly about the differences between baseball, softball, 
and Baseball 5. And this is the last section of this first module. We'll look more closely at the differences between baseball, softball, and baseball 5 and the similarities later on in the program. Let's start with defense. We'll take a look at the similarities and differences when it comes to fielding, throwing, and catching. We'll start with fielding. Similarities are found in the body position of the defenders before the ball is put in play. You want to be in the ready position. You want your feet to be ready to move with a low center of gravity. That's the same, but there's major differences, obviously, in the fact that the defenders have no gloves. That's the main difference. And they don't have time to move around the ball to create a good throwing angle. That's what you see there in straight roots. It's important to field with both hands because you don't have a glove to funnel it in. And there's generally less time to react. When it comes to throwing, we still set our feet in the direction of the target before the throw. And we finish with the same follow through. But there needs to be more of a short arm motion as you don't have time to shuffle to create momentum towards the target. No time to set your feet would be the baseball terminology. Moving on to catching, obviously you need to keep your eye on the ball, watch the ball closely, but you don't have a glove, so that really makes it necessary to catch with both hands, catch with two hands. There will be the odd play here and there where somebody makes a great catch with one hand, but more or less, use two hands when catching the ball. And those are some of the most basic similarities and differences on defense. Now we'll look at offense. And we'll start with a basic similarity when it comes to hitting the ball. It's all about hand-eye coordination and the body balance, rotation of the hips. The obvious main difference is that we don't have a bat, but we still need to have good footwork to create hitting velocity. It's different, though. The footwork you're using is not the same as swinging a bat. You need to find your own footwork to maximize ball speed and increase control. In terms of base running, the path between the bases is exactly the same, and the concept, the dynamic, is the same, too. You're trying to score runs. However, because there are shorter distances between the bases, a base runner really can't make any mistakes, and there's no time to hesitate. We also don't have coaches to help. There aren't base coaches like you'd have in baseball and softball. There's no time to look up for coaching assistance. Ultimately, this is a good thing because it improves base running skills and especially base running instincts. So I think what some might look at as a disadvantage, not having a base coach, I look at it as a really positive part of baseball five and that it teaches base running instincts now i know that's a lot of information to digest and at the same time it's still a very rough overview of what baseball five is how it compares to baseball and softball and how you make your own baseball five field now again this is just module one of seven so we will use the next modules to go into greater detail about all the topics we've discussed. Certainly hope you've enjoyed this introduction to Baseball 5, and we look forward to sharing more with you when we move on to Module 2.